If you have scoliosis, it can affect you many different ways. Let's talk about a few of them. The diagnosis of scoliosis is a diagnosis of a structural x-ray, meaning that there's a curvature in the spine that can be measured objectively using a Cobb angle to determine the degree of scoliosis. When people talk about scoliosis, they don't normally talk about the way it feels because the feeling of a scoliosis could be very different depending upon the patient. But we know scoliosis is defined as a curve that's 10 degrees or greater with rotation. If we have this, uh, this type of uh, curvature occurring in the spine, it's normally classified based upon severity, meaning a mild scoliosis is between 10 and 25 degrees, a curve between 25 and 40 is considered a moderate, and 40 degrees or greater is considered severe. And each case is unique based upon multiple factors in terms of where the curve is and the severity of the curve, whether it's an S-curve or a C-shaped curve, and of course the age of the patient, flexibility of the patient, could all have different factors in terms of the way it could feel for that person. But when it comes to the biggest question is, can scoliosis cause pain? And the answer is maybe. It's really a big maybe because in lots of cases, it doesn't cause pain, but in lots of other cases, it can. Mostly when we look at adolescents with scoliosis, patients that are below skeletal maturity, so um, for girls normally 16 or less, for boys between 18 years and less, that these kids do not feel pain no matter what size their curve it is. If they feel pain, it's normally a very mild and very dull ache at the site of curvature. If an adolescent feels pain, we normally think of that as being a red flag for possibly another condition or another injury that could be causing their pain, especially if they have night pain or they have pain when they're sleeping or pain um, while they're exerting themselves or any kind of numbness or radiating pain out into their extremities, any type of neurological type of pain. We're normally concerned of something else occurring in the spine and normally we're looking for other issues that may or may not be associated with their scoliosis. So if we see adolescents with pain, we're normally thinking what else could be causing it. However, when it comes to adults, adults almost always will start to feel pain as a result of their scoliosis at some point in their life because what's causing the curve to progress as an adult is compression of the gravity over time. And this compression over gravity over time aggravates the tissues and the nerves and the discs in the spine, which will eventually lead to pain, where adolescents, they're progressing because they're growing, which isn't compressive, so therefore it's not common to, fear, to feel pain. Now, can patients feel stiffness as a result of scoliosis? This is common in both age groups. This can happen in adolescent or in adult cases. And this tends to happen not because of necessary age or compression. This is normally related to size of curve. So we know the bigger somebody's curve is, the more likely they are to feel stiffness and rigidity at the site of curve. One thing that we do to determine how well we can reduce a curve is that we do something called a flexibility study. And by doing a flexibility study, we have patients that do bending. We do imaging of them bending left and right and in different directions so we can see how much the curve actually reduces during their motion. The more flexible a curve is, the greater it has chance of reducing under conservative care and even at greater percentages. But what we always see, even in small curves, that we see asymmetrical bending, meaning if a patient were to bend left and right with no scoliosis, you see very symmetrical bending. In a scoliosis patient, you almost always see some lack of motion in the area of scoliosis. So we know that there is some asymmetrical movement, which creates a feeling of stiffness. The stiffness, we believe, is a result of the structure, not a result of the muscles. This is not a muscle problem. The muscles are reacting to the asymmetry, which can make the muscles feel like they're overworking, but the feeling of motion stiffness is more structurally based as a result of the curve. Patients can also feel a, a feeling of fatigue or, or chronic of, of weight down or tension down on their body. And the reason why this is happening is because the asymmetrical load that's occurring on the body. It's kind of like a car. If a car is well aligned, the shocks and the struts and the tire will have even weight and pressure among them all, and the, the car will run well and smoothly, and then when it goes over bumps and stuff like that, it, you don't feel it so much. But if there's asymmetrical loading or if the car is out of alignment, it shakes at different speeds and bumps have a more greater effect on it, and the shocks and the tires wear out asymmetrically. Well, it's the same thing that's happening when it comes to scoliosis. It's that when the, when the spine is out of alignment like it is, and it's causing such a difference in the head, 
torso and pelvic alignment and down into the knees and the feet, this, this asymmetrical load causes the muscles to fire at a higher level, which causes a feeling of feeling like tired and fatigue and weighted down. This can also explain why a lot of times soft tissue work, meaning using soft tissues and massages, can sometimes help the muscle tissue, but it always comes right back because the unbalanced structure still exists. Again, the muscles are adapting to the asymmetrical load, not the other way around. So patients can sometimes feel unbalanced because of this, right? So they know they're unbalanced, they're feeling tired and fatigued, and this unevenness they can see in their posture, in their shoulders, in their hips, they can kind of feel like clothes doesn't fit right, it fits kind of awkward. And because of this looking at themselves, and them, uh, their asymmetry of the, what they're seeing physically, it can lead to emotional effects. They can have emotional feelings, negativity feelings about themselves. And this is especially for teens as they're growing and developing and trying to find some way to fit in with their peers. And when they can see that they're not, you know, cosmetically symmetrical, symmetrical like other or their counterparts, it can have a negative effect on the way they feel. So it's very important to have an open dialogue with kids and teenagers as they're growing and developing, understanding that it's not their fault. It's not because they're standing bad. It's not because they have bad posture, because willingly, the posture is a result of what's happening in their scoliosis. So when it comes to the way scoliosis feels in patients, it can have a, a wide variety of feelings, from emotional effects to physical effects to balance effects to, 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 to pain effects, and it's really different for every patient. But the best way to deal with all those effects is to reduce the curve. Because if you reduce the curve, you're going to get better improvement in all the things that you're dealing with in terms of pain, in terms of balance, in terms of cosmetic improvements. And in fact, if you can give even patients that are dealing with it emotionally, meaning that having a negative effect on them emotionally because of their postural changes, th the opposite is true when somebody feels like they've overcome scoliosis. They've actually reduced it and overcome it and have improved their ability. Now, instead of having a negative emotional effect, that can actually have a positive emotional effect, especially in teenagers that can use that ability to, hey, I overcame something, I reduced it, I did it myself with my own abilities, I got my spine better. It can also create a sense of accomplishment and, and that they can do things that, they are, that seem impossible. So if you have any of these feelings of regarding scoliosis, my best recommendation is to reach out and to see if you can qualify for a way to reduce your scoliosis using conservative approaches that don't require invasive and life-altering surgeries. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.